Hello, I'm Tom Hathaway. I'm wearing my BA hat to symbolize that anyone in an organization might do business analysis, whether or not they have the job title business analyst. So let's talk business analysis. This knowledge nugget explains the business value of detailed process and data specifications, introduces several options for expressing process specification, and presents a simple spreadsheet for managing metadata. This simple technique will help you when you are the one wearing the BA hat. At this point in your project, you've created a data flow diagram, exploded complex processes to the appropriate level of detail, and balanced the two levels. You'll discover that there are process details that those who will develop the solution need to know, but that you cannot express using the symbols of a data flow diagram. How can you capture and communicate those details to the solution providers? In data flow diagramming language, any process that you do not explode to a lower level of detail is called a functional primitive. Functional primitives are not good candidates for further explosion because analyzing the transformation, transportation, and storage of data within them reveals nothing of value. You may need to describe what happens inside a functional primitive, but need a different tool to enable a thorough analysis or to inform the downstream developers what the process really does. A description of a functional primitive is called a mini-spec or a process specification. You have a wide range of possible tools for documenting these specifications. To illustrate that, here are several examples of how you might document the functional primitive sort mail. You could use plain, simple English by writing a brief description. The mail arrives between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. The mail clerk opens each envelope and separates the contents into four stacks. Orders with payments, orders without payments, payments, and complaints. Once that's complete, the mail clerk processes the stack of orders with payments. For each order, he carefully separates the check from the order without damaging either, makes a copy of the order, staples the check to the copy, and adds the copy with check attached to the stack of payments destined for accounting. If the amount of payment exceeds 50% of the total price, he stamps the order credit OK and puts it on a stack labeled prepaid orders. Otherwise, he places the original order on the orders without payment stack. Once he's processed all orders with payment, the mail clerk distributes the stacks to the appropriate department. Original orders stay in the order entry department. Payments and copies of orders with payment go to accounting. Complaints go to customer service. If you and your target audience are comfortable with concepts such as pseudocode or structured English, you could also write the specifications like this. If item is an order, if payment is attached, separate payment from order, copy order, attach payment to copy, send copy with payment to accounting, if payment greater than one half total price, stamp credit OK. End. End. Else if item is complaint, send to customer service. Else if item is payment, send to accounting. End. If the process is primarily a decision-making process and your target audience is comfortable with them, you can also use decision tables, also called truth tables. To create a decision table, open a spreadsheet and write down each potential action as a column header starting with the second column. Our column headers in this example will be Column 2, Remove Check, Copy Order, Attach Check to Copy. Column 3, Add copy to accounting stack. Column 4, add payment to accounting stack. Column 5, add order to verify credit stack. Column 6, add order to validate item stack. Column 7, add complaint to customer service stack. Starting with the second row, write down a condition that has to be met for the actions in that row to be executed. For example, in the first cell of the second row, 
I write the condition order without payment. If that condition is met, the action will be add order to verify credit stack. The next row is for the condition order with more than 50% payment. If that condition is true, the appropriate actions are to remove check, copy order, attach check to copy, add copy to accounting stack, and add order to validate item stack. Following this logic, the next row has the condition order with less than 50% payment, which leads to an X in columns 2, 3, and 5. The condition payment not attached to an order in row 5 simply gets an X in column 4, and the condition complaint gets an X in column 7. If the process involves a lot of logical branching, you might also consider an activity diagram, an event response diagram, a system flowchart, or any other tool suited for depicting conditional sequences of actions. If the functional primitive is already automated, consider referencing existing documentation from that application. If it's not automated, check for a procedure manual describing how to do it. Often, processes are controlled by business rules. You might simply list the relevant business rules as process specifications. Sort mail rules. 1. Orders with more than half payment are credit OK orders. 2. Checks will be forwarded to accounting for immediate deposit. 3. Complaints will be forwarded to customer service. Given the state of technology today, you can use your smartphone to make a video showing the people performing the process. The key here is that you have many options for capturing and expressing what a functional primitive does, and these options far exceed the scope of this publication. Each of the presented examples contains the same information about the sort mail process. As the one wearing the BA hat, you have to pick the mode of presentation that is suitable for the process it defines and that you and your target audience both understand. The other component of a data flow diagram is the data. Recognize that every arrow on a data flow diagram represents data flowing from somewhere to somewhere, and every data store represents data at rest. At the lowest level of detail, you need to understand exactly what data is contained within each data flow and in each data store. Very often, problems in a process are caused by missing, incomplete, inaccurate, or untimely data. To be able to isolate data issues and to define the requirements for how a future application can avoid them, you need to know the data elements. You could consider this the equivalent of exploding a process. If you explode a data flow or data store to its lowest level of detail, you find a bunch of data elements. For example, the data flow credit OK order contains all of the data elements describing the order customer name and address, items ordered, order date, etc., and some indicator that this customer has good credit. To show the data elements on your data flow diagram, you can list all of them on every data flow and every data store. Whereas this level of detail is overkill for most projects, it might be very valuable to explode one or two data flows or data stores down to the elementary level to uncover hidden problems or ensure understandable requirements. You might also consider hyperlinking the data flow or the data store to a Word document listing the relevant data elements. Let's look at a concrete example. This is the order form that our example uses. If I ignore the physical layout and look only at the individual data elements on the form, I get this list. Order date, order number, customer PO number, customer ID, customer name, ship to address, bill to address, item number, item description, unit price, quantity ordered, extended price, desired shipping method, and total price. 
This list represents the minimum data content for every data flow on my diagram that contains the word order, e.g. orders with payments, orders without payments, new customer order, etc. It's also the data content for the data store valid orders. Of course, that's primarily because the diagram represents a manual process involving physical order forms being moved from one process to another. There will be additional flow-specific data elements associated with the state the order is in, with payment, without payment, new customer, etc. But this list is my starting point. What does the one wearing the BA hat need to communicate about each of these data elements to the solution providers so they can do their job? Typically, they need to know what the element contains, its description, where it comes from, its source, who has the authority to change it, what kind of data it contains, its type, how to validate its contents, data range or validation rules, etc. Collectively, this data about each data element is called metadata. Depending on the role you as the one wearing the BA hat have on the project, capturing and communicating the metadata may or may not fall into your area of responsibility. If you do have to capture this, I recommend creating a simple spreadsheet containing all relevant metadata about each data element. Obviously, the columns in the spreadsheet can be different based on your organization's needs and the project. The key takeaway here is that solution providers need to know a ton of details about the data that the solution will manipulate. These details can be provided by the one wearing the BA hat or another role, i.e. the one wearing the data analyst hat. Regardless who is responsible for capturing the data requirements, the business community is responsible for defining them. These decisions should not be left up to the imagination of those tasked with developing the solution or even to the one wearing the BA hat. To summarize, at the lowest level of detail, a data flow diagram may need to have process specifications for every functional primitive process, a list of all data elements for every data store and data flow, and appropriate metadata for each data element. Only when you achieve that level of detail can you claim that you have a fully fleshed out data flow diagram depicting the process and relevant data for your project. Thank you for viewing this knowledge nugget. Now that you know how to flush out and capture process specifications, identify data elements, and get the metadata, make good use of these techniques when you are the one wearing the BA hat.